In this video, you can see how to disassemble and install the EI7 built-in encoder. First, the replacement of an encoder with connection unit is shown, followed by the special features with M12 plug connector. In this example, a motor with brake is used, which is why spaces are required. Make sure that the signal cables and LITS wires are not damaged during all assembly steps with tools. Special care must also be taken when working with hot surfaces and magnetic fields. First loosen the screws of the fan guard and remove them. Then remove the retaining ring. Now apply the extractor to the socket of the pole ring fan and remove the pole ring fan. Note, do not apply force directly to the pole ring fan as this may damage it. Once the pole ring fan is removed, its socket must be heated for reassembly. A mandrel or an induction device should be used to heat the socket locally to 100 to 130 degrees Celsius. Do not place the fan directly on a heating plate, as this may damage the pole ring and the plastic of the fan. Now you can loosen the screws on the encoder and remove the encoder. The screws must be disposed of. Optionally, the spacers and spacer screws can also be removed. Then loosen the four screws of the terminal box cover and remove it. The containing wiring diagrams are important and should be kept. Disconnect the conductors of the encoder cable from the connection unit. Then loosen the screw that secures the shielding to the terminal box. The existing cable ties can also be removed. Now you can bend open the terminal washer and pull out the shielding of the encoder cable with conductor end sleeve. The terminal washer must be disposed of. In the next step, disconnect the brake cables from the brake rectifier. Now you can unwind the encoder cable and put the foam aside. If the foam is removed, Special care must be taken to ensure that no small parts fall inside the stator. The encoder can now be removed together with the encoder cable and grommet. The built-in encoder is now disassembled. As first, Slide new grommet onto the cable end of the encoder module. It is important to push the grommet onto the cable in such a way that the narrower end can be inserted into the terminal box. Note, when expanding the grommet, the maximum inner diameter of 12 mm must not be exceeded. To make it easier to pull the cable through the grommet, coat the cable jacket with cable lubricant and carefully push the cable through the grommet with rotating movements. Then pull the cable into the terminal box. Insert the grommet into the knockout so that it snaps into place all around. The grommet must not slip into the terminal box and the minimum bending radius of the cable of 28 mm must not be undershot. If necessary, mount the spacers and then fasten the encoder board with the screws from the service kit. If you use other screws, they must be secured with Loctite Type 241. Route the encoder cable in the terminal box so that it is not squeezed or subjected to improper strain and place the foam. Then insert the conductors of the encoder cable into the connection unit.
Fasten a new terminal washer to the conductor end sleeve of the shielding and screw it with the connection unit into the terminal box. You can then connect the brake cables to the brake rectifier according to the wiring diagram. You can now connect the conductors of the encoder cable according to the encoder type used and the containing wiring diagrams. The conductors can then be fixed in place with cable ties. Coat the fan seat with assembly paste, place the heated pole ring fan on the shaft and attach the retaining ring. As soon as the EI7 is mounted, you can check the optical feedback by LEDs according to the operating instructions for AC motors. At the end, install the fan guard and the terminal box cover. Tighten the screws in a crisscross pattern. With this final step, the EI7 built-in encoder with connection unit is replaced. If the motor is equipped with an M12 connector, remove the fan as usual and loosen the built-in encoder. The differences are located in the terminal box. First remove any existing cable ties and loosen the screw of the shielding in the terminal box. Note, a new terminal washer must be used to replace the encoder. For disassembly, bend it open and pull out the shielding of the encoder cable with conductor end sleeve. The old terminal washer must be disposed of. Remove the connection unit for setting the encoder resolution. Then unscrew the M12 plug connector, disconnect the conductors and remove the glass fiber hose. For further disassembly, proceed exactly the same way as the shown disassembly of the encoder with connection unit. Pull the encoder cable out of the terminal box, remove the grommet, install the new encoder, pull a new grommet over the encoder cable and route the encoder cable into the terminal box. Proceed exactly the same way as the shown disassembly of the encoder with connection unit until the encoder cable is connected in the terminal box. Push the glass fiber hose over the single conductors of the encoder cable. Make sure that the shielding must be placed in the opposite direction. Now you can route the conductors of the encoder outwards through the thread reduction. Make sure that the conductors for the connection unit are not routed outwards. Another glass fiber hose protects the single conductors directly at the screw fitting. Now connect the single conductors to the M12 connector, as shown in the wiring diagram. Then screw the connector back into the terminal box. Now connect the conductors to the connection unit. Note, a new terminal washer must be used to replace the encoder. Attach the new terminal washer to the shield and screw it into the terminal box. Route the loose cables in a loop under the terminal board and secure it with cable ties. The fan, the fan guard and the terminal box cover are then mounted exactly as shown beforehand on the EI7 built-in encoder with connection unit. This completes the replacement of the EI7 built-in encoder with M12 connector.